You know some people who just like too deep. You be like, sis, pull back. Like. Hey, hey, creators. Welcome back to the studio. I'm Aramis, the artist. Y'all, it's been a minute. No, it hasn't. <laughs> You always say it's been a minute. First of all, if you're new here, welcome boo, okay? Your girl is out here in Seattle, Washington. Um, my main medium is acrylic paints, but I feel like for the most part, we got a beautiful, intimate community. Um, so I just wanna say thank y'all so much for vibing with me during the last video. It was a live stream and that was my first YouTube live stream and it was so much fun getting to connect and talk with y'all. So I'm just like, uh, the best way to stay in the loop about when I'm gonna be live streaming uh, is definitely follow me on the gram. That's where it pops off, where I'll be sharing different notifications uh, in my stories. But also, I do post frequently on the community tab that's here on YouTube. I actually had asked for you all to vote to tell me what time will be best to do the live stream. So that's why the live stream was at six o'clock the other day, because you all voted. So I love hearing from y'all. So your girl's back. She's back in the studio. She braided the locks. What y'all think? Let me let me know about the braids. Um, we actually gonna unravel those so that we can have some nice little beach waves going on. Your girl feeling wavy, okay? And I'm super excited because I'm gonna say I'm done. I'm done with the painting. So I actually started a new piece. I'm gonna take y'all back a little bit in time to tell y'all more about that. <sighs> y'all, this is this has been hard for me, okay? So I shared with the Graham fam that I was going out of town to see family for the holidays. Your girl left her Monstera plant near the window, okay? in a snowstorm out here in Seattle, a rare event. Y'all, I know, I know. Ooh, 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 this, ooh, ooh. Let me pull it, let me, let me put it down. Three of them, y'all. R.I.P. R.I.P. Like, that's okay, that's okay. Um, know what to say after that to tell you the truth because that like really hurt my heart on some on some real shit we doing all right it's reminding me to let go let live um and that's what we gonna do in this new year the last time we chatted i was prepping those canvas and so i'm now starting a background layer on it y'all it is raining hella so i don't know if you can if you hear in the rain then uh welcome to seattle so what i'm working on now is this new piece that y'all saw me just on in the last vlog and y'all i got so many like metaphysical spiritual ideas that i want to continue to evolve on and that's what this new piece is gonna be so now that y'all a little caught up on this piece <sighs> y'all the cameras aren't doing these yellows and oranges justice okay this piece is popping <laughs> i'm actually really really proud so far of the background layers even though it's not much at all but i'm really excited to start doing some animals y'all back in the day i used to paint animals all the time so one piece that i really love is an owl that i painted it's called who am i and I actually recently discovered a tiger that I got, okay? Um, this has been up on display at a friend's salon forever, and I'm gonna be making prints available of this soon. But it also inspired me to start getting back into my animal series. You know, now that the Zodiac series is done, let's do something different. Or let's go back to some other stuff that I was doing uh, before, which was animals. But y'all know I love figure work too, so I'm probably gonna do some figurative, painting incorporate with, with some animals in this in this next piece but you know it changes all the time like I literally never know just stay tuned you all know that I'm, I'm gonna take you on a journey but y'all okay look what's in the studio I'm not about to try to lift this I'm gonna bring y'all here y'all are lighter okay <laughs> y'all are lighter the mama's gun mural is back okay 
Thanks so much to uh, my dear friend and studio assistant, Nalisha. Y'all, she went to go pick up um, the Mama's Gun mural that was up at the Paramount Theater. So back in 2020, when there was so many things going on, the civil unrest, the racial injustice that was taking place and the protests, um, a lot of the local businesses out in Seattle boarded up their windows. Um, and so they used plywood. And so they commissioned a lot of different artists to come out and paint murals. So during that time, I painted a mural for Paramount Theater thanks to Charika Waters, okay, my girl of Martyr Sauce, she always holds me down. I actually created a whole video um, showing you all how I painted that mural, so I'm gonna link it up here above. And so now that the theater is back open, things are starting to come back to a little bit of normal, sem semi-normal, nobody even knows what normal is these days, but you get it, okay. They were like, hey, we were gonna keep the piece up here, you know, it's large and everything, do you wanna just take it and say it? I was like, sure, let's do it. And so I actually painted a mural back in 2016, a uh, huge purple goddess. Okay, I painted that for KEXP radio station uh, at the Seattle Center. And so that was a temporary installation as well. So when that piece came down, we chopped it up into little sections. And so I gave it to, I gave it out to my supporters. And so there's so many people around the world who has a chunk of that mur mural, a chunk that has a piece of that mural. Um, and so this is actually one piece of it that I kept. Um, I think I'll link a video. I don't know if the video is public of how I painted that mural, but I'll link something below. And of course the giant purple woman that's in here, that's the main piece of that mural. So I also kept that section as well, but um, we gonna do the same thing. We gonna do the same thing with this Mama Guns mural where I'm gonna chop it up into little pieces and I'm giving it away to my patrons, okay? So if you wanna join the Patreon community, now is the perfect time, y'all. This this is the time because um, I'm gonna be giving away some of my original work. So um, I'm gonna drop all that information below if you wanna join the community. And the patrons probably had that update already if I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, where we gonna chop up the mural and uh, give pieces away. So stay tuned for the next video, I think that's I'm gonna show you all how how Andy cuts that for me because y'all know he ain't doing it. He doing it. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to the hubby. So I'm about to dive into some painting, but I also want to take y'all back in time to show you this very special Christmas gift that I got for me and Andy. <laughs> oh my god. Words are spells. Hell yeah. Hell oh, look at this. as fuck like oh this is giving me all the marks hell no <gasps> so scorpio's colors are blood or uh, blood red mm -hmm. so i wanted to get the like blood red vibe so it's like drippy on the back <gasps> and like sultry and velvety it's so this is going in the bedroom oh, like yeah, this is like is. a yes. sexy scorpio look at that Oh, he's gonna freak out. He's, he's gonna excited. freak out. I feel like it's perfect. America. I need a break from hysteria. Park like the one with the carousel. I get it lit in your area. 
I'm blocked to the vision, it couldn't be clear. You couldn't pay me to care now. I dare you to hate me supreme with the sound of the stadium. Shout out to my girl Blue, she got me some new towels. <laughs> Y'all know she needed She being me, okay? <laughs> because I always have holes in my shoes. Red one, if I hold you down, I'ma keep it there till we in the ground. Jet black when I paint the town, only blue sheets when they pay me now. I treat a setback like a step back. Wave, I got the game in a vice grip. Way up when the virus clear. All the homies on the flight list. Probably gifted, take the plot and I twist it. Got a big lit. Sex with the incense, got my mind rants, won't stop from relentless. I'ma need safety. Tell the op can't snake you. Ray gun, I'm safe. We back y'all and the painting is looking really good oh it's the turquoise thalo for me it's the thalo for me what this color is a whole vibe let me show y'all what's going on here so sometimes when it dries it looks significantly different but this one actually looks pretty much the same as how we left it last night um you can see that all these layers dried up here with the yellow and the white so i'm gonna get this piece attached back to the wall uh, so that we can start getting some work done on it y'all but the goodies came for the patrons so i printed the e3 wine label on the greeting card so if you knew here then um i'll let you all know that my patreon tier the supernova top tier they get three greeting cards each month so this is one of their greeting cards that's gonna go out. Uh, this was actually, do I do the hand? How's it focus? Okay, <laughs> yeah. This is a label that I did for an awesome company called E3. I actually talked about this in a previous vlog, so y'all can check that out. I'll probably link it up here. But um, they are officially shipping, y'all. I don't think I told the world yet. E3 is shipping wine, so if you love white wine and love a Riesling the way I do, and this one is bomb, it's delicious. I, sh I shared with y'all in a previous vlog, um, the opening party, why is it raining like this again, y'all? I'm just glad I made it here safely because it wasn't raining when I was driving. Anywho, it's three separate ones. I'm not gonna show y'all all of them, but this is one of them. They're going out this week to the patrons. Actually, next week. Yeah, I'm gonna drop the link below if you all wanna check out the E3 wine. I'm showing y'all the back of the painting. Clearly I'm being lazy. Usually I lay down my carpet so that it doesn't get as dirty, but it's the back, it's fine. But if you all remember from previous vlogs, y'all saw yesterday I poured hella paint and so none of it seeped through. This was the canvas where I used that professional gesso from a couple vlogs ago. It's bomb, y'all. I literally only use two coats. Usually I have to use more coats and then paint still seeps through because I'm just pouring so much paint. But you can see that this one, this one stood to test the time, worth it.
see it dry, pretty warped. So I'm gonna probably do a similar thing how I did with the last painting, which is flipping it on its backside and spraying it with water. These are truly my favorite parts. You can see some of the green got in there. I actually really like that though. So I made a lot of progress on just the sketch. So I'ma just walk y'all a little bit through my process and what's been inspiring me lately because I feel like I just be out here doing my thing and not really explaining a lot, but y'all know, I just be out here going with the flow. So part of it for me is starting with the painting on the floor, pouring the paint, let it do whatever it wants to do. But then from there, I sit back. So that's actually what I've been doing, okay? I, I pause the camera for a minute and just process like what I, what I really wanna say and what's the energy that I want this painting to exhibit. And so it starts out with me with a sketch. So I use chalk to sketch out my concepts. And so I already did have a little bit of an idea in mind around this concept of the black sheep. So black sheep can have like two connotations. Usually it's seen in this negative light, like where somebody is either the black sheep of the family, like they're, they're a little bit of the outcast, the weird one, the different one. But I feel like I've been identified as the black sheep, but to me, it's a, it's a good thing. <laughs> you know, it's actually something where you're so unique and different. I think to even be identified as a black sheep, there has to be an aspect of you that is showing up as your true authentic self. Because if you aren't considered a black sheep, that means that you're just blending in, right? So it's like you just doing whatever. And so if you are a black sheep, then it's like, okay, you clearly on a different, track <laughs> you doing your own thing out here in the world and people see that and can either like that be drawn to that or intimidated by it but i wanted this piece to one be a self-expression for whoever views it for them to take from it whatever they want to experience from it but of course y'all getting a little inside tip because i'm actually like breaking down just the overall energy that i want to have in the piece and so part of it is as if these black sheep are like light workers like they are here on this planet to share to create, to shine. I think I talked about this in, in another video about reading uh, Dolores Cannon books. So y'all, y'all gonna learn this real quick. Your girl love all the weird shit, okay? I've been deep into, I actually just discovered the law of one, y'all. Why am I obsessed, okay? <laughs> I've been going deep into the law of one content. And like, you know, you ever hear something and it just like immediately resonates with you as something that feels viscerally true, as if somebody told you something that you forgot. You know what I mean? And so it was just really refreshing. I'm actually gonna leave a link below um, to the YouTuber that I was watching. His name is Aaron. I can't remember his last name, but y'all, like amazing stuff. That's just been a philosophy that I've always had. And that like many people had, right? That like, we're all one, we're all connected. But the law of one breaks it down. So it's similar to, actually it's, I wouldn't say that it's similar to Dolores Cannon. So, so Dolores Cannon is a hypnotherapist. So she actually does like past life regression work where she's like going back into people's um, past lives so that they can recall memories and experiences. But sometimes they go so far back in time that they actually connect with people who were like Pleiadians. All the fun stuff that I love to binge out on. Um, Dolores Cannon is in that, but a lot of it's really confusing if you're trying to think about just timeline and you're like, okay, well, where does this civilization tie in? How does this civilization make sense with like what she's saying? And so what's been really helpful for me is tying in different philosophies. I feel like the law of one really gives you like a full picture. But before I even dive into the law of one content, I was looking into the hermetic principles. And really the first principle I think is um, all is mind and that's what really inspired the first painting but as I started to get into the law of one content it started to transition and shift where um, I actually called this piece well one of the tentative names of it is logos and I probably won't even call it logos I feel like that might confuse some people really the message that I want to take away is that all is mine and that is from one of the hermetic principles so if you want to dive into the law of one content I think it's good to first start with with the Hermetic Principles, the book that I would recommend is the Kabbalion. The Kabbalion gives you like a good framework for any um, spiritual or metaphysical text 
that you're reading in general. I feel like the Hermetic Principles is like an anchor. It was definitely an anchor point for me to understand how all these different things connect. So once I had my anchor in place, which gave me a lot more context for digesting Dolores Cannon's work, then the Law of One came into my life. And so the Law of One um, is channeled work. So if you're new to channel work, I feel like channeled work is starting to get more out there, especially with the Law of Attraction and Manifestation. Abraham Hicks, if, if you all are familiar with um, Esther. So Esther channels this collective community of higher density beings and they collectively call their name Abraham. Uh, and so she has channeled information. And so if, if you're deep into like the law of attraction stuff on YouTube, then you probably are familiar with Abraham Hicks. Um, and so Esther is channeling this energy. So if you are new to channeled work, I don't know if law of one would be good for you because I know for me, somebody who's raised in a, in a Christian household, all of that stuff is like, that's the devil, that's the uh -uh. But as I have evolved in my, in my spirituality, I understand that there's more than one way to speak to source and learning more about the law of one is giving me a lot more even context for stuff that was said in the Bible. It's like, oh, this makes sense. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I feel like there's just so many different messages out there, but a lot of them are saying the same thing. And so that's why I'm really inspired by the law of one work because it just provides this structure for all these different metaphysical principles and philosophies. So saying all that to say, this new piece that I'm working on on. It's pr it might be called Black Sheep. I don't know, y'all. Y'all gonna see how this piece evolves. I feel like the last piece that I was working on was gonna have this, uh, this whole Eve concept, like dismantling this idea that that women committed the original sin, you know, which keeps us in this low vibration of like shame and guilt. And in my opinion, continues to perpetuate misogyny, <laughs> discrimination, oppression, but that's gonna be another talk for another time. Okay. Overall, uh, that's where that piece was going and it completely shift to where it is now, talking about the hermetic principles, logos, the law of one, manifestation, all is mind, creating things into form. Um, and so this piece, I feel like I wanted to connect where the goddess in the previous painting is holding this Merkaba. Honestly, y'all, I first saw this sacred geometry in my mind during a meditation and I was like, what is this? Like I actually kind of had to go on a bit of a hunt. So I feel like I'm not even, I'm not even well versed as to why I even included the Merkaba. But if I give myself some time and actually dig deep into my thoughts, I can understand. So the Merkaba is two tetrahedrons, which is the pyramid. These two pyramids are um, intersecting and and they're actually facing two different directions. So one is going up, one is going down. And so um, I was telling you I was studying the Hermetic Principles. So part of the reason why I was like, yeah, let's include the Merkaba uh, is because it makes me think about as above, so below. It's this balance of divine feminine energy and divine masculine energy. To me, everything that is going on on a microscopic level is a mirror of what's taking place on the macroscopic level. Um, so I really wanted to incorporate that. When you think about the different chakras, the heart chakra actually has this uh, star tetrahedron in it. And if you study in the law of one content, then you know that the fourth density is connected to to love, which is around the heart chakra. So I feel like she's this, she's bearing this message of love and light. Like she's, she's here to share this reminder of the law of one and that we all are connected and to share love and light. I feel like we say that, but, but are we really though? Like are we doing the work? Are we unpacking the layers within ourselves to really even tap into self-love? And, and me and Andy was talking about this the other day, actually, that the saying that hurt people hurt people and love people love people, you know? And so I feel like the first way to even start the whole love journey to love somebody else is to love oneself first. So that's why I feel like this was a perfect beginning for me to start this series where it's actually a self-portrait of myself. So I've been on this whole journey of like self-love just like unpacking all the layers but part of me unpacking those layers is seeing those deeper dimensions like okay we are the creator we are divine spirit so when you think about source in the universe God whatever language you want to give this higher power when you realize that you are connected to that source then it's like 
Well, of course I'm gonna love myself. Like, if I'm a part of this infinite intelligence that has brought it all to be, then how could I not love myself, you know? And so when you peel back the layers of taking off the identities of being black, being a woman, being an 80s baby, being a millennial, when you peel that back even further and you realize and you see the divine within yourself first, now it makes it so much easier to see it within other people. And so in transitioning from the piece that I'm working on now to this current piece, I think about the saying that my mom says, and it's probably a Bible scripture because she's always like, she's always like quoting scripture, but she like tweaks it and kind of make it her own. So she always says, don't be so heavenly bound that you know earthly good. What I've taken that to be is like, you know some people who just like too deep. You be like, sis, pull back. Like, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. And sometimes I don't like to go too deep with stuff because like I'm not, one, I'm not sure like, who I'm talking to, if that person is ready. You know how people be like, um, what's the saying? Like, it's like check the crowd or something. Like just sus the vibe, like be aware of your audience. And so I feel like as y'all been on this journey with me through YouTube, I feel like, okay, I clearly have a very uh, spiritual, like metaphysical uh, community. And so I feel a little bit more comfortable kind of opening up and sharing more about that. For us, it's like, okay, cool, don't be so heavenly bound that you know earthly good, where you're not able to even have conversations with human beings in general because you're talking about different realms, dimensions, channeling higher beings, you know, fifth dimension earth, the new earth. You know, it's like some some of that stuff can be, can be dense for people, uh, especially when they're still just trying to manage this whole third density, right? So some of it is like, okay, pull back. How can we be here? And so this is the piece. I think I want this ray of yellow sunshine to actually be connected to this Merkaba light that she's holding. She's already coming from her own planet, her own plane of existence. So now she is presenting this light form which has manifested these different universes and planets and realms. Okay, now this is a manifestation of one of those planets and realms. This is a representation of planet Earth. I feel like she was I don't know what planet she's on, okay? She's in a whole nother galactic plane, okay? And she's birthed all these different universes. So this is a peek into one of them. Now that we're on this earth plane, there's so many people dealing with insecurities, self-doubt, lack of self-worth, uh, self-loathing, a lot of negative uh, self-talk. And what's interesting, I feel like these have been the black sheep of the world, but they are actually some of the most powerful beings when they actually really understand who they are. And I feel like black sheep are the people who who are the most intuitive, the most creative, the most empathic, but they are frequently the ones who are most shamed, you know, for their, for their beliefs, for their, for the way they act or the way they look. I feel like I almost wanna put the black sheep on a pedestal, you know, like no boo. <laughs> the black sheep is actually the goat, okay? The goat in a good way, the greatest of all time, okay? Um, I don't know, I don't know. It's still evolving. Y'all gonna see how it evolves. I'm still trying to figure it out. Uh, down here, I sketched out some hands. Like, I don't, I, I think I almost want this earthly realm to feel like it has its own consciousness because that's part of my philosophies as well in some of the content that was in the Law of One, that literally like Mother Earth has her own vibration. She has her own level of consciousness, which is now entering, well, I guess not entering, we're here. <laughs> She's here in that fourth density. And so I want the earth to have this sort of self-awareness of its own where it has these hands coming up. And like I actually love painting hands to y'all. Like I know hands are pretty difficult to paint, but the more and more you practice, the better you get. And I feel like I'm starting to get better and better. And I'm also thinking about putting some floating islands in the back, which will represent all these different dimensions and realms. I don't know, but also let me know, let me know who watching my videos? <laughs> like, let me know if I'm going too deep for some of y'all. 
um, and let me know if you felt like you've been a black sheep of your family or just different or the unicorn. You know, I, I feel like I feel like now the new term has been unicorn, which has been given a beautiful connotation. But I also wanted to play around with the idea of black sheep as well. So let me know what kind of viewers I got. Are y'all deep into the metaphysical space? Um, do y'all know who Abraham Hicks is, Dolores Cannon? Uh, have y'all been reading the Law of One? Um, would love to learn more about, about you all's a spiritual journey. I uh, actually recently just finished submitting a grant. There's a there's a spiritual art grant. Actually, one of my patrons. So shout out to Vanita for sharing, sharing that grant with me. Um, I saw it before and then she shared it as well. And I was like, okay, I definitely gotta, I definitely gotta check this grant out. Uh, and it felt like in perfect alignment with the transition that I've been making in my life as well. And so I'm like, if I'm going on this whole journey behind the scenes, I definitely wanna take y'all along with me and not feel like I just have to keep it surface level, you know? I don't wanna underestimate my audience. Y'all, y'all probably here with me. Y'all probably here. I feel like that was a great description. <laughs> maybe, maybe not a great description, but let's, let's say thorough. I think that was a thorough description of what this new piece is going to be and my kind of thought process around this series in general. I don't, I feel like I definitely want this series to be, to be spiritual, to be metaphysical. And so I think it's important for me to just give you all some context for that. I guess all of my works are spiritual, actually. Uh, I'm, I'm actually about to, I recently sold a piece, actually not recently y'all this painting shout out to my collectors they be so patient with me I just got this painting back from the Paramount I'm gonna varnish that piece and that piece is called if God was a her and there's a whole concept around that but I also feel like the title pretty much says it all though too like sometimes I'd be thinking like oh well you know there's there's a whole message behind that but is it though really no you actually mean what the title is <laughs> If God was a her, she would be fly as fuck, okay? And that's that's what this piece means and represents. So I need to varnish that because the collector, the collector is coming to pick it up on Saturday. Super, super grateful for her. So I'm gonna get into varnishing that. All right, y'all, I just got this painting all varnished. It was varnished yesterday, actually. It's dry now, getting it ready for my collector. She's coming to pick it up in like literally 10 minutes. <laughs> so I'm gonna wrap up the vlog here. Check out all the links that I'm gonna drop down in the description for y'all. The wine, Patreon, joining the newsletter, all the things, okay? Thank you so much for joining me in the studio today. And remember, if you like this video, like it, and I'll see you all next week. To one of them. and. Are we still recording? I feel like this has been a long as rant. <laughs> we still record, okay. Thank you.